what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM and this is actually a test build but I'm just showing you because of the build date the last build which was released was the 26 February 2023 build now on this particular build there was some quick setting panel flickering issue and stuff and all those issues has been fixed with beta update but I would say a new update or official release will be soon so yeah I'm just reviewing this particular build which just released later on after that stable build and it has this quick setting flicker fixed there is certain issues like if you are restoring google app data backup on this particular rom it won't back up your app data if you're asking what do i mean by that well let me actually show you with this here data usage from about 25th february all the old data that i had on my other device did not back up so the app data and stuff will not be backed up properly otherwise everything is perfectly fine while restoring in the about section this is how it looks like we still have the evolution x logo up top and the android version shows as android 13 all the android 13 easter eggs are actually showing up perfectly fine no issues and we have the evolution x version as 7.6.2 and the code name here it shows is tapsy log and we have this device code name as rafael for the redmi k20 pro and it shows official but again this is a test build you can say and we have the security patch as latest of february 5th 2023 if you scroll down more we have the stock kernel as the 4.14 so we start and the build date again is mentioned as 26th february 2023 and the maintainer is of course still stalix this data shows as enforcing in the system settings we still get a system updater from where you can actually check for updates there is the usb configuration as well and in the gestures we have this quick tap or the back tap kind of features if you turn it on there is all these screenshot toggle flashlight recent apps and stuff all these features for the back tap then we have the quickly open camera and in the system navigation gestures and the settings of it we have the pill length pill radius if you scroll down more we have the back gesture animation swipe to invoke assistant and stuff all these things should be working perfectly fine left edge right edge customization and the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture two button three button navigations both are there one handed mode is also working fine then we have these always on fingerprint that's the screen of FOD and we have this press and hold power button for assistant and stuff switching option then the screenshot yes it is working fine with a three finger screenshot gesture and there is the share edit delete google lens and the capture mode feature as well so you can use it for whatever you want then we have this playback control and the prevent ringing so these are basically normal things the customizations on this rom is amazing let me go into the evolver settings and in here in the theme section you will get this normal theming option from here you can actually change the style of it to vibrant or this tonal spot expressive and these other options luminance and in the dark theme we of course have the pitch black enabling option and stuff there is a custom lock screen clock color you can change that but also you do have these combined quick setting elements and the cyberpunk shaded color pop two-tone accent outline and the default one is there the notification shade has this kind of look in the survey punk mode and you are getting this kind of quick setting panel the brightness slider also changes but yeah in the light theme the quick setting panel stays dark like this that's what i do not like but yeah that is how it is now in the lock screen clock font we have plethora of options just look at this there is i think 100 plus options so yes you are getting plethora of styles for the lock screen clock so yeah amazing amount of lock screen customization you will get and i have been using with this is how the lock screen clock actually looks like for me but yeah overall i would say it's a very good experience with the lock screen clocks they definitely look amazing in my frank opinion like these ones and the effect is very quick as you can see it has changed so you can apply all of these clock styles however you want to and of course you are still getting the headline and body fonts plethora of options are there for the body fonts no issues and we have the lock screen clock format you can change it to single or double line and the icon pack is there then the signal icon styles are there even plethora of styles for that and for the icon pack you get these ones wi-fi icon styles are also there then the icon shapes and we also get the nav bar styles these are the presets you can choose from and of course in the status bar settings we have this battery style again plethora of options for the battery style like the big circle big dotted circle icon landscape right or left then we have this landscape r style l style all these things are there and i have been using it with this one looks beautiful to me and the status bar icons you can actually customize like the headset bluetooth etc icons of course pretty much normal things and you are getting all of the customizations which were there earlier those are still present you should not worry heads up you can customize the battery light there is the battery do not disturb mode and we have this in call vibrations as well if you want to enable that you can 
In the quick setting panel customization, we have this layout customization and there we'll get this column in portrait mode, rows in portrait mode. Then even we have this rows in quick setting option and we have this vertical layout, height level, all of these options. And even the battery style you can change for the quick setting, but I have it on follow for status bar. And we have the secure quick setting tile require unlocking and stuff. And the brightness slider, you can actually have it on show always. And the position, you can change it to top or bottom. If you scroll down more, we have this vibrate on toggle touch. We scroll down even more we have this clear all button and you can even change the button style for the notification clear all button and in the power menu options we have this disable power menu on lock screen for privacy and even we have this like changing option to digital assistant if you want advanced reboot is right here you can enable even more toggles if you want from here in the gestures we have this brightness control and even the long press powered in toggle torch is there double tap to sleep on the lock screen and the status bar both are there and of course there is the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen you do not need to worry about all of those in the button section we have this navigation bar and the system navigation settings again power app volume control is there by the way volume panel looks like this you can put the output device to your phone's speaker or or your bluetooth device if you want from right here and we have this click trick partial screenshot in the lock screen we have this edge lighting ambient music ticker and even the udfps customization again we have the screen of a 40 i'll show you the fingerprint scanner speed but these are the fingerprint scanner icons you are getting also the fingerprint scanner animations you can of course change to these many options but i have been using with the default options pretty much for the animations and the lock screen charging info is also there ripple effect fingerprint scanner authentication and the left shortcut right shortcut you can actually change for the lock screen so if i tap here it will open my google home controls and if i tap here it will turn on or toggle the torch and you can customize it also we have these many options to actually customize from or choose from for the right left or right shortcuts and single shortcut option is also there if you want to use it for some reason in the buttons we have this navigation bar system navigation gestures let me go back we have the animations and you can change the styles of the animation from right here and we have the misc settings we have the google services parallel space game space is also there you can add any game that you would like and the smart pixels are also there for the burn in production and stuff you can use it we have this launch music app on headset connect unlimited google photo storage unlock higher pc in games and the netflix proof is present the pulse option the volume panel timeout and we also get the ignored window secure flags then the sensor block per package, wake lock blocker, alarm blocker, all these things. And in the USB configuration, you can change it to file transfer for convenience from here too. So yes, in terms of customization, still you cannot really beat the Evolution X ROM in my frank opinion. Let's talk about the stock launcher. This is how it looks like for me. I have changed the wallpaper and this is a Wallpy apps wallpaper that I'm using. It looks beautiful to me. And to the left of the home screen, we still get the Google's discover page. Swiping up will get you to the app drawer. Swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel. And this is how it looks like. And all the widgets that you are going to add are working perfectly fine like the clock and stuff the animation of it opening and closing is working fine and the battery widget and stuff is still there the screen time widget the weather widget everything is working fine if you tap here it will go into the phone's battery settings if you tap here it will go into the bluetooth battery settings by the way the whole ui is running at 72 hertz i guess or 71 hertz for me as you can see 72 hertz but you can of course push it up to 102 hertz yes there is slight bit of color shift with that, but yes, overall, the fluidity with the 1 or 2 hertz is amazing. No issues whatsoever that you will face, except for the color stinting a little bit to the yellowish or greenish side. Other than that, there is no such issues about like flickering or something with the high refresh rate, no issues like that. Also in the test UFO website, as you can see, right now it shows 100 FPS. So yes, it's not a gimmick, it's actually working fine because the display has overclocked to 1 or 2 hertz. And I would say if you have replaced your display, do not just overclock your display with these like toggles and stuff. Just do not do that. Otherwise, it will mess up your display or something like that. So yeah, if you are using your stock AMOLED display, if you have not replaced it only then, switch the refresh rate to up to one or two hertz. It won't be an issue. And as this is an Evolution X launcher, it still has all these customization. You can customize it however you want to. There is the recent customization as well. There is the memory info seeing option, then the clear all and kill app and all these other customization. And this is how the recent panel looks like. We have the screenshot, the Google lens and the clear all button. And the RAM status shows up on the bottom like this. If you want to go into the split top mode and stuff, they are still there, no issues with that. And double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen is working perfectly fine. And talking about the finger scanner speed, it is very fast. If you are noticing this, yeah, it is working perfectly fine 100% of the time, I would say. Finger scanner unlocking experience is amazing on this round. No issues whatsoever that I have faced while using the finger scanner. And even from the lock screen, let me actually show you that. As you can see, it unlocks perfectly fine.
Now let me show you the face unlock as well while I'm onto it and here if I just swipe up it will use the face unlock. If I just look at the device yes it unlocks. Let me try one more time with the face unlock. Yes it does work but as it's a motorized front camera so it takes a little bit more time and the app lock is also working fine and okay so for some reason it did not unlock. Let me try one more time. Yeah right now as you can see it has unlocked the Telegram app. So yes, app lock is also working fine. For some reason, it did not unlock for me right now on camera. But otherwise, for my daily usage, it has been working fine. Stock camera is still a Leica camera that you are getting and it is even more optimized right now. There is all these settings and if you want to go into the settings of it, we have this quality adjustments, then the volume button shutter function and stuff, all these things. And even you can customize it from right here for the camera modes and the preserve settings and stuff, all these things are there. Let me go back. If you swipe up from the bottom, you will get the short video, panorama, vlog, vlog pro, slow motion, time lapse, all these other settings. And here, let me actually show you in the video section, we have up to 4K 60 FPS shooting option. So you should not worry about anything with the video. And yes, it is actually working fine. It's not a gimmick or something. The 4K 60 FPS is actually working. And even with the ultra wide angle lens, you can take videos and all the lenses and stuff I mean are working perfectly fine you should not worry about it and there is also the pro mode for video as well and you can shoot even 4k 60 ps with the pro mode too no issues with controlling the white balance focus shutter speed ISO everything you can customize and just do tweaking however you want to you can also install a gcam if you want this is a mgc kind of gcam I'll link it below this is a really great experience with this gcam there is the 4k 60 ps option and stuff shooting option with the mic changing to your Bluetooth devices mic and stuff. So all these features does make a really good difference. And I like this Gcam. If you want to use it, you definitely can install it separately. I'll link it below. In the battery settings, we are getting the design battery capacity, current battery capacity, the charging cycles, and even the temperature seeing option. So this is huge. You're not getting all of these features in most ROMs. So yeah, and we also have the battery optimization. You can do it per app. And we have the battery charge warning smart charging and all these other functions. Now let me show you the battery life that I have tested it with, with the Aku battery app. And as you can see, the screen on time for me shows as eight hours. So that's a huge amount of screen on time, but I do have a new battery over here. Because of that, I'm getting amazing battery life. I do not have any complaints with the battery life of this ROM. And you can see the screen off is about six days. So that's huge. Even the combined use you can see is about 63 hours. So you can say about like two and a half days of combined use. And in the health section for me, it shows as 95% for the battery health. So yes, my battery health is really good because I have replaced the battery. But if you haven't, you will definitely get about five to six hours of screen on time easily, even if your battery is old. In the sound and vibration settings, this is how it looks like. We have this vibration and haptics. If you scroll down more, we have the screen locking sound, charging sound and stuff. And we have the silent and media mute option. This is a new kind of function, so you can enable it if you want. Then we have this me sound enhancer too. There is the Dirac logo right here, looks beautiful. And we have these presets for the youth edition and stuff. And with the youth edition, the sound quality via the headphone jack has been good enough. There's the choose preset option too. You can also go with bass booster if you want. Smart scenes you do get and the enable hi-fi option is also there. And we have the haptic feedback for the whole UI intensity of the vibrations. And we have this clear speaker option too. If you want to use that, you can. In the display settings, we have this brightness level, adaptive brightness, extra dim. In the lock screen, we have this show QR code scanner and stuff, all these things. Then we have the always show time and info, always on fingerprint scanner. And the advanced settings is also there. And if you turn off always on display, there is the pickup option. And it is actually working fine with the pickup. Let me actually show you quickly. So I just put the device and just pick it up. And as you can see, the pickup option is actually working perfectly fine. Now there is a pocket detection, the dark theme, and you can also change the pitch black mode and stuff from right here. There is the display size and text, the font size, display size, every customization is there. And if you scroll down more, we have the live display and in here we also have this anti flicker or the DC dimming mode. Now here I would say one thing that in the quick setting toggle, you can actually customize this and we have this anti flicker and the DC dimming separately, but this DC dimming has been buggy for me. So I would say it's just use this anti flicker mode that should be good enough. We also have this outdoor bright sun mode in case if you want to use that, you definitely can. There is the automatic mode too, you can leave it on that. And we have this colors, you can change it to natural, boosted, saturated or adaptive. I prefer the boosted one. And we have this allow window level blurs. The DC dimming option is separately there again. And the minimum and maximum refresh rate you can change from right here. Prevent accidental wake up, wake up on plug and per app refresh rate. You can actually change to 60 or 90 hertz. 
if some apps are not working with a high refresh rate. There is the wallpaper sign styles and you can change the wallpapers from right here. There is also the papers app if you want to use that. But I have been using a wallpaper app for that and we have this wallpaper and the basic colors from right here you can choose from and the themed icons dark theme and the system fonts you can change from right here as well. It passes the safety net test right out of the box so banking apps is not a problem on this particular ROM. And the DRM info stays as L1 here so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. And it does have the Pixel Unlimited Google Photos backup so no issues with that. So overall in terms of daily driving I did not have any issues. The overall experience with this is amazing and the 102 hertz is working perfectly fine even while scrolling and stuff no issues. There is the Google phone dialer or Google Pixel kind of phone dialer. So that works fine for normal Vaulty calling and stuff. I don't have a SIM card over here. That's why you do not see any kind of SIM card or Vaulty logo, but it should be working fine if you insert a Vaulty SIM card. But overall, the whole UI's performance has been really good for me and everything just flies on this ROM. I do not have any complaints with this and I did not have any such like lags or stutter issues on this particular ROM. Yes, there was some bit of flickering on the quick setting toggle, but that has been fixed with the test build update. But otherwise, I think uh, next update will be pushed real soon and that will fix even more stuff. So Evolution X just gets better and better with each and every update. That's how I feel for the Redmi K20 Pro and I don't see a better ROM than this. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build if you want to get an idea about the overall performance of the UI. The performance is very good. So let me in the comments what do you guys think about the latest build of the Evolution X ROM based on Android 13 on the Redmi K20 Pro. It has the quick setting panel customization, the lock screen clock customization. All these things does make a really good difference. The fingerprint scanner unlocks the device perfectly fine all the time. So everything is just battery smooth and stable and really drivable. That's how I feel. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.